How do you make any avatar quest compatible? The simple answer, it's a two-button conversion process using VRC quest tools, then you reduce the texture resolution and you're done. You need the VRChat creator companion if you don't have it already, which installs Unity for you, then you need the Android SDK and VRC quest tools. However, since it's a simple process, I also wanted to go over ways you can improve your quest model and also what you can do when your quest model says it's over the 10 megabyte limit. So with everything ready to go, let's get started. Hey guys, so this video is going to be about how to make an avatar quest compatible. It's a lot more common knowledge than I usually want to go for with videos, but I did get a lot of requests for it. So I want to not only show how easy it is to make an avatar quest compatible, but also how you can improve it um, in small ways. So I've got Marley here who was the avatar that was used for the how to make an avatar guide and she is available in my world memories in may so as simple as she is and honestly does not represent my style in avatar making if you do like her you have the option to go get her in my world for free but we're gonna use her in pretty much every video because she's you know it's it's on my computer i don't have to do any extra work it works so get used to seeing her so i'm going to use something called vrc quest tools you can get vrc quest tools by googling it i'll also put the link in the description and you'll want to go to the GitHub page, click on the releases, and then click on the Unity package in the assets option. If you want to add it through VCC instead of as a Unity package, which I recommend because it'll update on its own and you don't have to keep going and getting the Unity package file yourself, you would just click on add to VCC and then to add it to your avatar's project, You'd go to manage project and find VRC quest tools. Mine is outdated. <laughs> we're going to ignore that the other ones need updated because that's not what we're working on right now. So now that I've got VRC quest tools in my project, I'm going to click on tools at the top, hover over VRC quest tools, and then click on convert avatar for Android. It's going to open up this window and I will drag the name of the avatar into this slot and scroll down and convert. So while that's converting, it shouldn't take too long, but I found something out recently. If you don't have a name in the Fizzbone transform, then like this, they all say none, then they're not going to sync between platforms. Meaning if someone grabs this hair on Quest, the PC side is not going to see it. So if that bothers you, you need to make sure you drag the bone into the root transform. If that doesn't bother you, like it doesn't bother me, who cares? It's going to hide the PC version. I like to have them both there, so I reshow it and I'll move the quest one over. So I wanna go over what we see real quick. The first thing is the eye color. It's pink on the PC version and it's blue on the quest version. That is because on the PC version, I used a hue shift in the video where I made it, I actually used a decal and replaced it, but I thought maybe a hue shift would convert, but it does not. So if you wanted any shifting colors, any color replaced decals to transfer over to the quest side, then you would have to put it in the main texture slot. So you'd have to change the texture manually in Photoshop. So I am just going to leave the eye color blue. So the metal is the second thing i want to go over here it is like a silvery reflective shiny whatever metal and then here it is white every time i've ever converted with vrc quest tools it's always white so i'm going to start with that i don't want to leave the avatar converted exactly like this because i think it could be improved significantly just by a few changes so for the metal i'm going to change the tunelet to matte caplet and then here in the matte cap section, I'm going to add a metal matte cap. So it's just a matte cap, nothing fancy, but it is significantly better than just a gray texture or just white from the default. And then to improve the hair, it also is just a texture which I can change from tunelet to standard light, which 
I'm actually going to undo that and select both at the same time because I want it to happen to both so I don't have to do it twice. So anytime you change the standard light, it's going to look like this because you need to turn these down. I've never seen a scenario where you actually want those enabled and whenever I actually bring it into game, I'm they look like black, like they're so dark you can't even see it. So my normal hair texture and my emission hair texture can be used on the standard light material. These are both 1024 for PC, but that is most likely too big for Quest. So I'm going to duplicate it and move it into my textures folder that VRC Quest tools made. Now that I have these two separate ones that I can reduce the texture of later, I'm going to select these hair materials again, drag the hair normal into the normal map slot, and then enable an emission. I have noticed a strange bug where if you're not directly looking at the material with the emission um, expanded, then it won't show the emission, So, but it will show in game. So I just kind of ignore it. I'm not sure why it does that, but it's just a bug. So I'm gonna continue what I was doing, enable the emission. I'm gonna drag the emission map into, into there and then you turn off this light so I can see better. I am going to separate them at this point because I want the emission on the second hair to match the main color. So it's going to be like a purpley pink like that. And then the black one, I'm just going to do a gray like that. I also want to add more shading and the sock normal to the socks because it's just a solid color. I'm not going to worry about these two because they already look pretty good and the more normals emission maps and all that that i drag onto the quest side the more likely i'm gonna have to start reducing textures to the point that they're really blurry so i'm gonna do the same thing here go to the socks pull the normal out as in duplicate it and then drag it into the that was the wrong spot and then i'm gonna change it to standard light drag those two sliders down to zero put the normal map in and it looks a lot better I did record all of this already, but I hit pause and then I forgot to unpause this portion. So I'm just going to quickly go over it again. I have two more things that I want to touch on. And the first thing is the skin. It's just a really boring texture. So there's not much I can do with it. However, so if I were to change this skin material to standard light and set it to zero, it would have a gray effect on it and it just, it, loses all color like yeah you want the shading but you don't want it to be gray it it doesn't look that good and my fix for that is to put on a matte cap instead so i've set the material to matte cap lit and then i made this little matte cap here i've got two here that i made one is cool toned and one is warm toned so depending on the skin this should work for any skin color because you're multiplying these shades on regardless of how light or dark your skin is. I think the more important part to focus on is, is your skin cool toned or warm toned? And these are just really simple. So I'm, I have them on my shop for free if you want to go get them. But if you look at the difference here, let me change this back to tune lit. This is what I would have it at normally. It's just completely one toned. And then if you add the matte cap, it's, it's huge. It looks so much better. And this is something I just now thought of making this video. Originally, I would leave it as is and I, because I don't want that gray tone from the standard light. But then when I tried this gray matte cap that I made, it also produced the same effect. So I had the idea to make this and it looks awesome. It honestly, it's, it's going to be something I do regularly now because it makes Quest avatars just look so much better. The second thing I want to go over is something that I found out recently. So most heads are quest compatible, but recently some that come with these polygons for eyelashes instead of eyelashes being individual polys. See how it's a triangle here, 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 and here. This one is just, it's one plane, but it's made up of 10 polygons. You'll use a transparent alpha like this, so it makes the eyelashes into this using cutout, transparent, transclipping, whichever one ends up looking the best. 
but that's not quest compatible. Except I have recently found that if you use VRChat Mobile Particles Multiply, that it actually does work because the texture that it made has a white background. It, I, it cuts the white part out or if it were transparent, it would work as well. There are some other heads like Amelia head where it does not work immediately. I had to go into Photoshop and make my own texture. And when I made my own texture, this is the PC version and this is the Quest version. Without the texture that I made, it was like this. But I combined this texture and this texture into Photoshop by overlaying the color on top of this one using an add layer and I created this. And it's doing the same thing. The white is a transparent background that creates this, let me put the correct texture back on, that allows me to make this head quest compatible with just a little bit extra work. Now, I did have one person on this TikTok that I made about this state that when they did this, the mesh ended up being invisible. So even though it looked correct in Unity, it was invisible in game. I don't know if that's correct. Everyone else said that they have been doing this for all of their quest avatars for a while. And this one person said that it was invisible. So if anyone wants to comment below on whether or not that's true, that said, even if it is invisible, I still personally think invisible looks better than this. Now that would mean that the eyebrows are invisible too, and it, you would just we wouldn't have any eyebrows or any eyelashes. So to work around there, I would probably separate them into two different materials and make the eyebrows opaque and then set the eyelashes to the particles multiply. So that way there'd be no eyelashes now, I do want to note that in this scenario, these two heads are actually quest compatible with a few extra blend shapes being activated to remove the wispy eyelashes. This one even has its own quest eyebrows and eyelashes that it brings out to replace the PC eye eyebrows and eyelashes. So you don't need the particle multiply shader, but sometimes you will run into heads that, that don't have stuff like this, that, that that's your only option. So it's definitely still better at the end of the day to avoid this, even if it is invisible as its solution. Okay, so now the avatar is looking a lot more where I would want it to be. We still have some issues to go over. The first one being that I probably have too many fizz bones. It transfers over all of the fizz bones. So if I had multiple hairstyles, straps everywhere, then it's going to have all of those fizz bones, which is just way too many for quest because you can only have eight. So if I go to tools, VRC quest tools, remove fizz bones, then make sure the Android version is right here. It'll tell you if you have too many. And right now I do, I have 12. And the transforms I'm going to ignore for now because I wanna focus on the components. If I reduce the components, it'll re also reduce the transforms and I'll probably be fine. This is all personal taste. I like to try and keep as much of the hair as I can that's like front facing and definitely the tail. The ears can be stiff, that doesn't bother me. And then I don't care about the boob and butt and actually just removing those, that was fine. So now most of, no, I didn't remove any of the hair. So all of the hair still has fist bones and the tail has fist bones, so we're perfect. But I'm good now, including colliders. So I'm going to close out of that. The next thing you'll wanna do here is reduce the textures. So when you use VRC Quest tools, it will put them at 2K. I do know of an option where you can tell it to be a certain texture, but I swear I have tried it so many times and it does not work. So I just don't even bother and I do it after. So again, it's under the VRC Quest Tools output, the name of the avatar, and then textures. So I'm going to click on one and select all of them with Control A. And then use Crunch Compression and we'll do 512. If any of them end up looking horrible, like if I had a tattoo, which I'm realizing that's also something that didn't transfer over because the tattoo is a decal. 
Yeah, so if I wanted that to bake into the quest side, I would need to open Photoshop, put the tattoo directly on the skin, and then it would show. And that's where I would make the skin texture at, at least 1K. And if I have to lower some of the other ones, like the hair can definitely go down to 256 and look fine. I'm not gonna have it at 256 though, cause it, it doesn't need it. After all of that, you are done and you should be able to upload the model. Now VRChat does recommend a quest avatar only have one outfit. If you did everything I did with the resolutions being relatively similar, you should be able to upload. But if you have more than one outfit, more than one hairstyle, you might start seeing issues. So the last resort thing is to find the FBX. I know where mine is, it's right here. If you can't find it, click on the model in the hierarchy and then under the animator, click this right here and it'll take you directly to the FBX, which is the first thing in the list from this arrow, which is right there. So I can change the imports to none. It's not going to look good. So I'm gonna change it while we're looking at the socks so you can see how drastic of a difference it is. If I apply that, the matte cap effect is gone. The socks are back to a solid color. This is not ideal at all. It does not look good. It's fine though. If you've tried everything else and you can't think of any other things you might do, any other meshes you could try deleting to get this uploadable, then go ahead and do that. That should resolve your issues. But again, I recommend you find every other possible solution before you do that. One last note to go over is if you tried to switch it to Android mode and you get an error, it could be a variety of errors, generally something Android related, Android SDK, Android mode player is disabled, something like that. You need to install the Android build support. Without that, you will not be able to go into Android mode and you will not be able to upload the avatar on Quest. I'll put this link in the description. But once you've got that installed, switch to Android and make sure you copy the ID of the PC version on the Quest avatar, scroll down, and then paste that into the blueprint ID and when you upload on the Android side, it will register as the same avatar. Oh wow, the glitter looks really bad with the import set to none. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was everything that I wanted to go over. I know this was a simple one. Most people know how to make their avatars quest compatible, but I hope that I helped some of you. I hope that I helped people who did know already, maybe learn some new things on how to improve your models on the quest side. If you have any other tips for making avatars quest compatible, improving them in any way, feel free to drop it in the comments. If you have anything you want me to make a guide on, put that in the comments as well, and I will definitely take a look and see if it's something I can do for you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned something. Bye!